Before I begin today's video, I have to repeat a trigger warning that I added to another video, and then, unfortunately, I have to expand upon it. In a previous video, I used these symbols representing people. Now, I warned people that even though these may look a little masculine, these are not representative of men or women, just people. People said, these look too masculine, these look like they're men, and you're leaving women out of the equation. And I said, well, there's neither a penis, nor is there a vagina, on either of these figures or any of these figures, so they are not men or women, but some people still thought they were too masculine looking, so I will change the figure that I'm using to represent people today. I'll make it a little more obscure. Now this is about as gender non-conforming as I can make it, with it still looking sort of like a person. Now I did consider going a step further by giving it one of those horrible millennial uh, unisex names like Dakota or something, but I thought that's going too far. But I will use this symbol now in this video to represent people. I think we can all agree that this is neither a man nor a woman. Now the part that I'm really surprised I have to make. I have to deal with some other sensitive sallies out there, and these people are right-wingers. They noticed in the presentation that good guys were blue, and bad guys were red. And they believe that red means Republican. So they were like, you're saying Republicans are the bad guys. And I was saying no such thing. Because you know who was red before Republicans were? Satan. That's who. So if you've got a problem with me using the color red to represent evil, well, take it up with him, her, it. Don't take it up with me, because in this video, red will still represent evil. With that being said, let's get on with the video. You know, one fallacy that the left loves to shove down people's throats is that people plus guns equals evil. That somehow guns are a very important part of this equation. If you take people and you give them guns, you'll end up with evil deeds. Well, that can't actually be true because a lot of the times people plus guns equal good deeds. In fact, that's most often the case. So you can't have these two equations existing simultaneously. They cancel each other out. At the very least, you would have to have this equation that people plus guns equals good and bad, but that wouldn't actually be a fair representation. A fair representation would be people plus guns equal the vast majority good and the occasional bad, the occasional evil, because there's a lot of guns in this country. A lot of people have guns and such a tiny percentage of them ever do anything bad with it. So this would have to be the representation of that equation, but this equation is not going to prove their point here. So they like to go to the people plus guns equals evil. But since, as we've already proven, this equation is wrong, it's a fallacy, it cannot exist in this form, there has to be another variable. There has to be an X factor. And it's this X factor that actually creates the outcome of evil. In fact, in this equation, gun isn't even important. You can change gun to any other tool that a person could use to commit an evil act, and the equation will stay the same. So the gun itself isn't important. What's important here is that variable, that X factor. Now that X factor can be a lot of things. It could be your family. What kind of family did you come from? Was it an accepting family? Was it a bigoted family? Were they abusive? Were they kind-hearted? A lot of different factors could come from your family. It could be environmental. Were you raised in a good neighborhood? Were you raised in a bad neighborhood where you had to fight and steal or whatever just to survive? It could be your religion. Do you have beliefs that motivate you to do bad things? It could be your education level. People with higher education levels are far less likely to commit evil deeds. And another very common thing that a lot of people don't like to address is mental health in this country. We have a lot of people that suffer from mental health issues in this country, and a lot of them are just over-medicated or ignored. And another common factor can just be your emotional health. Are you happy? Are you sad? Are you heartbroken over something? Are you despondent? People who commit crimes of passion do so because of their emotional state. So emotional state plays a big part here. That X factor can easily be emotional issues, issues that people could get help for if they weren't ignored. So when you look at that equation and you try to figure out what that X factor is, what is that variable that makes people do evil deeds, that X itself can be a lot of things. It can be multiple things. It's really hard to narrow down what it is, but one thing it definitely isn't is a gun. It isn't firearms or any tool that someone would use to do something bad. It's much more complicated than that. 
Now you think this would be very easy for any educated person to understand, but every year a lot of supposedly educated anti-gun people spend tens of millions, hundreds of millions, if not billions of dollars trying to demonize firearms when that so obviously isn't the problem. In fact, here in Washington recently, a Bloomberg-fronted group spent nearly $5 million on one single ballot initiative that was struck down by the courts before it ever reached a vote. That's a lot of money wasted. Now imagine if people started spending those tens of millions, hundreds of millions, or even billions of dollars on things that matter, like education, families, health care, mental health care, and so on. If they actually started doing that, if they actually started throwing all that money at real issues, we might start living in a society that is happier, healthier, and safer.